good. So uh, I'm recording this. Uh, I will post it later. I mentioned this in the chat already. Uh, it takes me a day or two usually to do the processing that I need to do to get it uh, online. But uh, I will have a folder for you to look at the lecture outline recordings too. And um, so this is a Saturday class. Uh, it's a bit of a crazy system because you're going to be with me all day on Saturdays. So that's 8.30 to uh, 4.30. And uh, we will take breaks, and I will take breaks approximately every half hour or so, um, just to let you know. And, um, but I will be lecturing, and what I'd like to do is uh, tell you a little bit about uh, my lecture style so, and what I expect of you. So as I've mentioned a couple times before class got started, uh, and here, let me, uh, there we go. First off, I guess let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Bill Miller. I'll be teaching Chem 1010 this fall. Um, and uh, anyway, I've been teaching at community colleges for 20 years. This is only my second semester here. Um, but uh, hopefully I have some experience and uh, I, I really want to work with you to have a good experience in this class. Now, uh, as far as lecture notes go, uh, let's see here. more time there we go all right so uh, what you're going to be doing is I'm going to be giving you uh, what are called lecture outlines and uh, you're going to be watching me lecture on these materials and then um, and writing notes so for example on page number one in a minute or two I'm going to go over this page I'm going to write some notes on it and uh, at the end of today's lecture uh, you should have all the notes for lecture outline or lecture handout number one. Then um, you're going to then uh, uh, turn those into a PDF and submit them for four points. Okay, and so uh, how you turn them into a PDF, uh, there are videos in the how to section uh, of the Blackboard site that I will go over uh, later today. Uh, and what we'll be doing is from approximately now till 11.30, I'll be going over these lecture notes. From 11.30 to 12, we will have a break. And again, we will have breaks before that, but 11.30 to 12 will definitely be a break. We'll pick up again at 12. And if there's any lecturing to do it, uh, to finish up lecture handout one, we'll do it uh, then. And then I'll go over for the rest of the afternoon how the class works, how lecture works, how recitation period works, how lab works. I'll answer all of your questions. And um, so, uh, good morning. Yes, good morning, everybody. Um, now, as far as lecture uh, outlines and taking notes, since this is the first lecture outline and it's the first day of class, um, I'll go over what I intend for you to do, which is you print these out, you write right on them, and then you take the pictures. This is the first day, so if uh, I'll go over all the options too. If you would prefer to uh, watch the lecture, uh, watch my lectures, and uh, you have a tablet or something, you can pull up the notes on a tablet, and if you have a stylus, you can write right on the, the, the PDF on a tablet. Another thing you can do is, um, after today, if you want to, you can write all of my notes by hand, and then write all the notes while watching the lecture video by hand. So you don't have to print anything out, okay? Um, but for today and today only, uh, for lecture outline number one, you don't have to print this out if you don't have it printed out already. What you can do is you can just write the notes as I go through the lecture by on pieces of paper and turn those in. So for special, for day one, as long as you turn in the notes that I'm writing on these handouts, you'll be fine. You can um, turn them in, you can upload them, and you'll get your four points. But after today, I, I need all of the notes on, that are already pre-printed and all of your notes that you take while you watch the videos on the same sheets. Because the idea is that uh, you have a complete set of notes that you can use to study from and uh, that's a particularly important in my class because uh, the, the exams and the homework are very closely tied to the lecture outlines. So it is to your benefit to do that, okay? Um, let me set, check the chat now. Uh, 
the lecture outline file I see on Blackboard does not look like yours. Uh, it is not in the course content. Well, uh, let me share my screen. Let's see. So, so I'm in, um, and we'll go over this more later, but if you go to a, um, there, uh, uh, if you can see my screen now, and you go to course content, whoop, there, now it should look like, and now I'm in student mode. I go to course content, I go to week one lecture, uh, and then I click on it, and then I scroll down. Right here is lecture out, oop, sorry. Oh, oh, I see the problem. And again, I apologize, I apologize for this. There's going to be problems. And it looks like lecture outline one is hidden from students. Ah, oh, I am so sorry about that. Uh, that is totally my fault. There's no way you can have the lecture outline because I did not make it available and I did not see that. So I really apologize for that. And so, uh, okay, now it's here, whatever. I, I Now nobody can have it. Um, so thank you, thank you for clearing that up. Uh, now it's there, it's too late for it to be of any use for us right now, um, but all right, um, let's see. So that's a good example um, of uh, if there's a question, if there's something wrong, just let me know. So that was definitely a mistake on my part. You can't possibly have these handouts and Mike, yeah, now I totally understand why you couldn't get the right file. Anyway, I apologize. And let me just say this too. So when I make a mistake like that, um, there's I, I will do everything I can to not penalize, like there should be no penalties for that. I mean, I will work with you anyway, but so now what we're gonna do is you're gonna have to take, everybody's gonna have to take the notes on separate pieces of paper, submit them, and for lecture outline number one, also called lecture handout number one, that's gonna be fine. So anyway, yes. Uh, but now it is available and you'll be able to find it later. So good. Now let me see if there's any other questions. Yes, the lecture outline is not on the course content. Uh, Nikiru, Nikiru, I apologize. Um, so now back to my regular, now, so now back to what we are gonna do. We are gonna take notes on this and uh, we're going to take them on separate pieces of paper and you're going to submit those. Um, and as far as submitting them, uh, let me go over that. So now that it's visible, now what you're going to do when I'm in student mode, yeah, I'm in student mode, you're going to go to lecture outline one. When you click on it, you're going to see that there's four points possible and you're going to go down to uh, submission and um, you're going to submit your lecture notes. And uh, yes, um, and you should upload a PDF. And uh, by the time uh, lecture is over today, you'll be able to do that and everything will be fine. Okay, are there any questions about that? All right. So uh, again, I'm gonna start lecturing. I'm gonna go through these handouts one page at a time. Uh, my pages are generally numbered down here in the lower uh, right, uh, right hand corner, although sometimes there's a graphic over the number, but hopefully we'll be pretty well organized about that. All right, let's start lecture. Uh, question, how is chemistry like an onion? A, it stinks. B, it makes you cry. C, it has layers. D, I don't care, I like parfaits. Uh, and uh, what I'm going to tell you, uh, don't answer that by the way, yes, I know. <laughs> um, but uh, the answer that I'm gonna suggest right now, hopefully it won't make you cry, I'm gonna do everything I can to, uh, to do that. Uh, it stinks, people may or may not like chemistry, I totally get that, um, uh, but we're gonna talk about how to negotiate this class and get through it and get the grade that you want, that's my goal. I'm gonna say chemistry has layers. And so what, why I highlight that point is because on when I present to you the information in this class, 
I'm going to present to you the chem uh, uh, level of material that is appropriate for this class, okay? Uh, and so there are things that I will say that like you will, um, oh, so let me circle that. It has layers. Uh, it's, um, so there are things that I will tell you that will cause you to ask more questions than I answer because uh, we won't be, uh, like the stuff that goes to a deeper layer of chemistry will not be on the exam. And then I will also set, tell you things in this course where it is true greater than 90% of the time, but there are exceptions. And so uh, it has layers, I refer to this, and we will start with like some of the layers and sometimes we will go to deeper layers. And my analogy will be, so uh, chemistry is like an onion, and I'll say, well, we're on the outside layer of the chemistry onion first, and then we'll go to the next layer, and then we'll go to the next layer, or sometimes I'll say, no, we're th the only layer you have to know is this layer, because it's the only layer that's on the exam. Um, and the class is very focused. Like, there's a lot of material, but hopefully it is all good stuff. Like, I hopefully you will never find there to be busy work in this class. Everything is focused on teaching you the material in the simplest way possible that, uh, as far as I can tell, so that you can be successful and learn the chemistry. Uh, question, when is the deadline for lecture note submission? It is always at least a couple days after the lecture notes are you're supposed to watch the videos. Um, off the top of my head, I'll have to check the deadline. And what I'll do is I'll answer that question later after we take a break when I go check the Blackboard site. Okay, so now uh, two, studying for this course. So when studying for this course, I will point out to you that you are in class on Saturdays. So in class for seven hours each Saturday. And I think we have eight hours total, but that's because there are breaks. So you're in class for seven hours. And you should expect to spend all of that time if you want to be successful in this class. And if you do, I will work very hard to make you successful in this class and answer all your questions. And that is my goal. Um, then out of class, Over the last 20 years that I've been teaching uh, this course and courses similar to it, uh, and I've polled my students, they tell me that to, be, to get the grade that they want, you have to spend an average of 13 hours per week outside of class. And some students will spend more or need to spend more to get the grade that they want, and some students will uh, need to spend less. So one of the things about this class in chemistry in general is that everybody comes into it with a different background. And so it's sometimes hard to say, but you will know, like I think students, you, you will know if you're ready for an exam because like you will have answered enough questions and you will feel that you're comfortable with the material and you know, does anybody ever feel 100% comfortable with chemistry? Probably not, but you have a really good idea when you know the material. And I think you have a really good idea when you don't know the material as well. And when you don't know the material, that's when you get anxiety and test anxiety and things like that. So um, things that I do to minimize test anxiety is the exam is very closely aligned with the homework and the lecture outlines, right? There, there, you, you won't know the exact question on your exam, but you will have seen similar ones. And so um, you will, like, the only thing will be you'll have similar wording, but say a different reaction in different numbers, right? Everything I do is to get you prepared for the exam, and everything is closely linked. But it is true that the exam will be new questions. New questions, questions, like I'm not gonna pull question. Well, sometimes I do, every once in a while I do pull an exam question from the homework or from the lecture outline. But mostly what I do when I write an exam is I go to the lecture outlines and I go to the homework and then I think, 
What's a similar question I can ask with similar wording, but actually a different question? So, um, so, and you should, I mean, I will say this in class, this is on the exam or this is not on the exam, but it's good to know. Uh, and you can write that down in your lecture notes so that you can refer to it later. Like, like I understand that, or, uh, that this is not everybody's favorite class. Maybe it is, maybe it is not. Probably not, I get that, but we need to get through this class. So, all right, so, uh, but students spend, and this is, so I, I oftentimes at the end of class poll students and uh, 13 hours is what they spend outside of class. So that's 20 hours a week. This is a big class, uh, so plan on that. B, um, so really watch, and like you're doing now, really watch the lecture videos and do the homework. Okay, and uh, so those are important because the exams are just like the lecture outlines and like the homework. So, um, I mean, take the opportunity to, while you're doing the homework, really understand it. Come to my office hours and talk about it. Um, we'll talk about how to form a study group and get extra credit later. Form a study group, talk about it with your uh, peers in the class, work on homework with your peers in the class and understand it, okay? The more you, I mean, think about how you would learn just about anything. The more time you spend with it, the better you get at it. Right, and chemistry is not natural to most people, so it takes a lot of time. But everybody can do this. And uh, that's my thought anyway. Um, another thing I'll say is not everybody has 20 hours a week, and you may be taking this class to get a C by the skin of your teeth. That's fine. There's no judgments here either. Like if you know you have seven hours in class, and then you spend three hours a week. Well, I would suggest you may not be successful, but even if it's only three hours a week, come to office hours so that they're three productive and efficient hours per week. Or if you're spending 13 hours a week and you're still not getting the grade that you want, come, you know, spend more time when office hours with me, or I don't know, like talk to me about it and we'll try and figure something out to make you more efficient. Um, uh, C is gonna say, get all of your questions answered. Get all of your questions answered. Um, yeah, I mean, so like I said before class started, when you don't get your questions answered, uh, so chemistry is hard enough, uh, or let's say this, when, when chemistry is hard enough when you do get your questions answered, it is much harder when you don't. So uh, please ask questions. Um, so I see questions about study groups. And uh, yeah, please feel free to start discussing that in the chat. Um, I will go over uh, the amount of extra credits that you get when forming and being in a study group later. Uh, but don't worry, I will talk about that. All right, so and then D. D is going to say be point efficient. Be point efficient. So what I mean by that is uh, there are a certain number of points in this class and uh, you need a certain number of them to get either an A, B, or C. When you do lecture outlines, and I give you four points for doing them, so uh, a lecture outline point is essentially equivalent to an exam point. So the more lecture outline points you get, the fewer exam points you need to get the same grade. Uh, and lecture outlines are easy, meaning that all you have to do is take down the notes, turn them in, and you get four out of four. And if your notes are like your notes, you'll see in the when I post now that I've posted it that the lecture outlines have to have the vast majority of what I write, plus any additional notes you write from me talking. Um, but uh, so, and I will quickly scan over them and make sure that it's there before awarding you the four points. Uh, 
lecture outline points, homework points, lab points, and recitation points. Those are all points you can get just by, and you can get 100% of the points just by putting in the time, asking questions, and uh, interacting with me. Like if you're doing a homework question and you can't get it, come to an office hour and we will talk about it until you get it. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's, uh, that's how it works actually. So, um, and uh, if you get, and, and so all of those points for like homework, lecture outlines, and et cetera, labs, are about 30% of the points in the class. So you can get 30% with 100% in this class by putting in the time. And then you need less exam points. And the exam points are gonna be the hard ones. And we'll talk about how exams are going to happen in this class. Um, I can tell you this right now, we will not be using any um, software to monitor you. Um, Instead, I will ask you to do things like on each exam, and this goes for recitation as well. Again, we'll talk more about this later. But on an exam, there will be an, uh, a video portion where you have to answer a question, write out your answer on a piece of paper, and then uh, you're going to have to aim your camera at the piece of paper and guide me through your thought process as to why this is the correct answer and submit a video. So, and it doesn't have to show your face. Um, it uh, does have to, uh, yes, I am recording this by the way. Um, the, um, you record a video, it doesn't have to show your face. It, uh, it does have to have your audio, so your voice or, and I'm open to other options. If you'd prefer not to show your voice, we'll just have to discuss it. But typically when I've done this in the past, you people have shared their voices on their videos. Um, and there's some example videos uh, for in the Blackboard site that we can, I'll show you where they are for later. Anyway, be point efficient, get the easy points. The exam points are gonna be harder. Um, the more of the lecture outline homework points you get, the fewer of the exam points you get, you need. And um, this class, if you get all of the lecture outline homework, lab and recitation points. For the exam points to get an A, you only need an 85% average, okay? So you don't have to get A's on the exams. I mean, of course we would like to. You don't have to get A's on the exams to get an A in the course if you do all of the homeworks. And, uh, Um, anyway, uh, any questions about that? All right. Well, I'll jump in anytime if you have questions, either in the chat or uh, by uh, turning on your mic and uh, asking a question. Uh, e, last one for this one, is be time efficient. What I mean by that is make sure that you are, um, when you try a homework problem, try it for about 20 minutes max. I mean, hopefully less than that, but if after 20 minutes you're just stuck, ask a, a student in the class, ask a question on the Blackboard discussion site about it, email me, come to my office hours, right? So um, you, what you, you don't wanna spend an hour on a question because that's just too long and you, you end up wasting time. Um, so try it, then seek help. I find about 20 minutes for me is about as long as I wanna work on a problem before I need help. Um, and then I ask a question. Uh, it is impossible to ask questions of people if you're trying to do the homework at 10 p.m. the night before it's due at 11.59. Like nobody enjoys that. And I've certainly been there myself and not been able to finish homework. But if you start the homework, like if you were to start the homework for homework one right after today's lecture, you'd find that all of the material is fresh and it's easier to do the homework. 
Plus, if you get stuck on a question, you can take a picture of your work and email it to me and I will comment on it. And my response time is uh, always within 48 hours and oftentimes within 24 hours. And if you catch me at a good time, um, and uh, a good time is, so like if you send me a message late at night, I wake up pretty early and I try to answer all my email the next morning uh, by 8 a.m. If I can, no guarantees on that, but I hope to have a good response time so that you can get your answers and, and be time efficient and get all the points. Okay, good. All right, so that's uh, page one, gonna move on. So page two is where we really start talking about uh, things. And I see that I've been talking for 27 minutes already. I'm probably gonna do this page, uh, which will push us over the 30 minute mark. And then we'll take a five minute break, get some stretching, I'll drink some more coffee, and then we'll pick up. So uh, hang in there. Three, the uh, so Roman numeral three, the phases or states of matter. So uh, there will be uh, three phases or states of matter that I'm gonna talk about right now. Those are the solid, liquid, and gas phases. And it, for me, it's important that you have a picture of these phases when you think about them. And so um, solids, the particles have a rigid, definite shape and 3D order. And so if I were to draw a solid and I'm gonna draw a circle, and that circle is gonna represent an atom. So I'm gonna write equals uh, atom. And one of the substances that forms a solid phase in, as atoms is argon. So uh, an atom of argon is gonna be a circle. And now I'm gonna draw a solid. And uh, there's no surprises here, I don't think. You want to draw an evenly spaced set of atoms. And truly, it should be in three dimensions, but I only have two-dimensional paper. So I'm going to draw these. They should not be touching, but they should be very close. And in an ordered, uh, definite uh, arrangement. So again, it's supposed to have 3D order. By 2D order, what I mean is, if you go a set distance, it, you always get to a new atom, you always get to a new atom, and so these atoms are locked into place. Okay. Uh, I see a question about will we need a TI-84 calculator? The answer is no. You can use them if you uh, have them. Uh, this is the calculator I'm gonna be using. It's a, a very basic one-line scientific calculator. Uh, it's got the little solar panel, so I uh, don't even need batteries for it. Anyway, this is the calculator. I have a couple of these, but this is the one I've got on my desk right now in my Zoom room. Um, the atoms are locked into place. Now, um, let me, so, in this picture, I also want to talk about kinetic energy a little bit, okay? And so when I talk about kinetic energy, my abbreviation for kinetic energy is going to be KE in capitals. And what I hope to do in my lectures is whenever I uh, do a new abbreviation like this, I should always define it. If I don't, please let me know. Uh, and then capital T is going to be temperature. Okay, And there's really two temperature scales in chemistry. Uh, one of them is degrees Celsius. And that's noted here. And the other one is Kelvin. And we'll talk more, uh, actually, I'm gonna give you the relationship between them right now. So Kelvin equals degrees Celsius plus 273. And uh, here, so it's actually Kelvin equals degrees Celsius plus 273.15. Uh, in this course, the 0.15 never makes a difference, but this is the formal definition. 
Um, and uh, so Kelvin is what's called absolute temperature. If you've heard of absolute zero, absolute zero is the lowest temperature possible, and that is in the Kelvin scale. So Kelvin is absolute temperature. That says temperature right there. I sort of mis mixed my letters at the end. Absolute temperature. Okay, so uh, again, we're gonna refer to this picture of a solid in a minute. Um, I guess there's one other thing I have to define, and that is Ke with a bar above it. So bar in math means the same thing that it does in chemistry, average. So this right here is average kinetic energy. And I've already defined kinetic energy, so now bar mean, Ke bar means average kinetic energy. Okay. Uh, so um, I've got a question. Can I zoom in on my paper? Uh, I'm so the I, I do try and show the whole page. So uh, and I am recording this. So if you can't see anything right now, uh, I'm sorry. I uh, I'm not going to zoom in. Um, I don't know if you're watching on a phone or not, um, but um, I I do tend to show the whole page because I am going to refer to this picture right here. Um, so, all right, now here's what I wanted to get to with all these definitions. So uh, in uh, chemistry and physics and science, Ke bar is proportional to, and again, that's a new thing, so I will define it. So this is a fish turned on its side facing to the left. Uh, it's also the lowercase Greek letter alpha, and it means is proportional to. So average kinetic energy is proportional to temperature, and just to be clear, temperature in Kelvin. And I've boxed that, and in my lecture notes when I box something, that means it's super important, and you should memorize it. Uh, we will talk about this relationship probably five or six different uh, times throughout the course of this class. Uh, but So boxing means, uh, putting something in a box, means super important, memorize. Okay? And sometimes I even write that, and sometimes I even put little stars next to it too. Uh, to note again that as you go through your lecture notes, super important to know. Now, why is that important now? So uh, if we take, uh, let's say, my solid desk right here, it's a solid, right? So, uh, but it's not moving or it's not appearing to move. So, and kinetic energy is energy of motion. Uh, here, Ke is energy of motion, and that's just a scribble out right there. Ke is energy of motion. So how does a solid have motion if none of the atoms are moving or appearing to move? They're all locked into place. Uh, and as you'll note, by the way, I've already used two colors. The most I ever use is three colors. And if you want to take notes in three colors, that would be great. It's totally not necessary. But for me in taking notes, it helps me to highlight the differences between, um, so uh, you know, when I'm talking about something else, or like I used green here to note a definition. Anyway, so ki kinetic energy is energy of motion. Question, it's a rhetorical question, I'll answer it. Um, what is the motion of a solid? And the solid, each atom vibrates in place. So I'm writing right here, each atom vibrates in place. And how that affects my picture of a solid 
is I'm going to draw little vibration lines on several of the atoms. So those are uh, vibration lines. And our picture of us, uh, so vibration lines. And so now the red has allowed me to emphasize something about my picture. So anyway, I just like three colors. Um, I can tell you my favorite color is green. Uh, and I just happen to have a red pen today. So that's why I have those three colors. Uh, and so our picture of a solid is going to be, uh, let's see here. Our picture of a solid is going to be to uh, atoms that are in three-dimensional order. So you've got atom one, atom two, atom three, et cetera, et cetera. And then our picture further of a solid is that those atoms, they could be actually molecules too, but my, my picture right now is atoms. And those atoms are vibrating in place, okay? So if the question is, how does a solid have kinetic energy? That energy is uh, evidence in the vibrations of the atoms. So let me go back to the lecture notes now. Good. Um, question, are they always vibrating? Yes. So, uh, and I guess the only time they would not be vibrating is if the temperature in Kelvin is zero Kelvin. And, but that is a temperature that nothing can ever get to. Scientists have been, uh, never been able to get to zero Kelvin. Um, so yes, all solids have vibrations because all solids are above zero Kelvin. Okay. And so in my desk right here, the, the, the molecules, whatever it's made of, are vibrating in place. That's the kinetic energy of any solid. Okay, so we've been going for almost 40 minutes now. That page took a lot. Uh, I'm gonna take a break. Uh, I've got 9.08 on my uh, computer. So we're gonna take a six minute break. So uh, that's nine, or let's take a seven minute break to 9.15. Uh, I will lect start lecturing at 9.15 again. Um, I'll hang out for a minute or two and see if you guys have any questions. And then I will take about a five minute break. So, um, and I'll, yes, so I will stop recording.